Hello, I'm Marianne Deveni. A more than 50% drop in oil prices has affected much of the investment market. But how much has your house price changed? Well, that depends on where you live. Today, we'll dig a little bit deeper into the housing space with Derek Brolton, Deputy Chief Economist at TD Bank Group. Well, we've seen this huge drop. Derek, what's uh, in oil? What's the effect on housing? Well, we have seen some pretty visible impacts, uh, not so much on prices. Price growth has been very st uh, stable and solid uh, in recent months, but sales have really come mm -hmm. down. And, uh, you know, as not surprisingly, we've seen the oil producing regions of Canada uh, where we've seen the biggest fall off in demand. Uh, for example, in Calgary, sales are down about 45 wow. percent from their peak uh, of the fall. Edmonton, 30 uh, percent. Saskatchewan, similar story. In other markets, though, we've seen sales come down. Uh, and, you know, I, I would chalk up to that to some to volatility in the, in the oil markets. While they benefit from lower oil prices, I think the volatility can be a little bit destabilizing. And investors, I mean, maybe they haven't been investing in quite the same quantity. So overall, we've seen sales come down in Canada, but price growth remained quite solid so far. So looking ahead, what do we see for, for Canada then just across the different areas? There's quite a bit of difference. I do think we'll see a, a widening in the gap going forward. Uh, when oil prices fall, it does create uh, a lot of regional divergences. We're already seeing it show up, but I w imagine it will continue to. Um, you know, interest rates have fallen. That's going to provide uh, certainly a benefit to housing markets uh, broadly across Canada. Um, and we'll see it show up, I think, in the sales. U.S. demand remaining strong will benefit a lot, a lot of the parts of the country. So overall, I see housing activity for the most part holding up quite well. I see prices remaining reasonably stable this year, Canada-wide, uh, in the east and, uh, and central Canadian markets in particular in Vancouver. Uh, in the case, though, of Edmonton and, uh, and Calgary, though, uh, we're looking at price declines of about 10% uh, uh, in the coming months. So it's a pretty big drop. Yeah, it is a big, big drop. I think what mitigates uh, an even bigger drop is the fact we do see oil prices stabilizing towards the end of this year, rising back up to about 65 on average next year. And those markets went through a, a fairly significant correction only about five years ago. So that'll limit the downside. Uh, but there's no doubt that given the numbers we've seen, there's mm -hmm. a, 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 a certain amount of, uh, of panic. Uh, maybe that's a strong word because I do think people, when they expect prices to drop, are going to hold off those were, that we're looking to buy. But uh, I think it does portend a fairly significant drop in prices going forward. And the East Coast has been hit pretty hard. Are, are they coming out of that? Yeah, they are. Uh, you know, prices are, are still down in the East Coast. Uh, Newfoundland and Labrador is an oil-producing province mm -hmm. that will face some real weakness. But in terms of the broad maritimes, uh, they've already had a soft landing. They've seen activity levels come down. Levels will remain stabilized this year. I can see a bit of a bounce in 2016 in terms of sales and prices. So low rates will help uh, as well in the eastern markets. Um, the leader, though, this year, I think, will be Vancouver. Uh, oh. We're seeing good momentum in BC markets overall, Victoria included. Uh, it does suggest that uh, you know investors haven't completely turned off the taps, that investment money is still flowing there. Uh, I did notice uh, in recent days that visa applications for mainland China to Canada are up quite a bit. So maybe the lower Canadian dollar is encouraging some investor activity there. Um, so that market, I do see a fairly good growth in prices, mid-single digits this year, better than average. In Canada, we see something more modest than that. What about supply? We've talked about, especially in, in Toronto and in the Ontario area, that supply is increasing at such a huge rate. It is. And, and I think, you know, with when you think about a, a region like uh, the greater Toronto area, lower oil prices benefit. Uh, they provide a bit of a de facto tax cut. Good U.S. demand. We see decent growth here in the region. And now interest rates have come down. So you think, wow, I mean, that should be very supportive to housing. And, and I do expect that will help. But I think the supply side is a reason to think that uh, we're not going to see prices go on another significant leg up. We do have a lot of condominiums coming on the market in particular. Uh, we haven't seen uh, as many condos come on the market as one might think, given all the cranes and the condo construction part, because there have been, very, uh, there have been lengthy time delays getting these projects completed. But we're now starting to see uh, those, uh, those completion rates pick up. So I would imagine this year, next, we'll see a lot of new product come on the market. And I have to just go a little bit more on interest rates because we had that surprise cut and now it looks like there's a delay and maybe lower for longer. Is that how long can that go? Even lower for even longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it, it's that was a surprise cut. Um, bond yields have come down. 
Mortgage rates have been trimmed. Uh, it just suggests that the borrowing environment is going to be even better than, than anybody had expected a year or two ago. So that continues and it will support housing. Um, we had Polos speaking earlier this week and uh, he suggests that uh, the bank after cutting a quarter is going to sit on its hands. I think he wants to give a little time to see how impactful that quarter point rate cut is. Many of the markets had expected a follow-up cut at the March 4th fixed mm -hmm. announcement date, but uh, in light of his speech uh, earlier this week suggesting that uh, he's going to sit on his hands, so those expectations have shifted. So I do see a fairly stable, albeit very low interest rate environment continuing, but I don't expect the bank to cut further in the, in the, in the, in the coming months. Thank you very much, Derek. Thank you. I've been joined by Derek Bolton, who's Vice President and Deputy Chief Economist for TD Bank Group. Thanks for watching.